Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue our journey, yours and mine, with regard to the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2020. And to continue, I'd like to focus our attention, if I may, on that title, which was designated the spine number 1043. This is the extraordinary work uh, from 1979. Uh, the filmmaker is Francesco Rossi. And the name of the film, and please pardon me for my poor pronunciation of Italian, is Cristo si è fermato a Eboli, or as it's known in English, Christ stopped at Eboli. This is the work from 1979, directed by the great Francesco Rossi, and it is an extraordinary work, my friends. It stars Gian Maria Volonté, the great actor, as Carlo Levi, who is in political exile in 1935, uh, so the mid-1930s, uh, in Italy and he is exiled to a particular part of the southern part of Italy. And this work, in essence, uh, follows him, and we see his interactions with the, the community, and we see him uh, interacting with specific people in this community. And the episodic nature of this means that we get a really a vast and wide sense of the landscape, uh, both the physical landscape and also the, the socio-economic landscape of this particular society in the South. And uh, given those uh, contours of the depictions, we then get a, a really profound exploration of many aspects that are affecting these particular people in this community during this time of the mid-1930s. And to put it very briefly, uh, many of the aspects involve the, uh, the, the fascist state uh, and fascism uh, in the 1930s and how that affects people directly and their lives directly. And we get this in the sense of the uh, the, the, the promotion of certain types of propaganda, and we see how people react to this type of propaganda. We also see the effects of this in terms of the uh, Italian state's war at the time uh, in Africa, in Ethiopia. And so this becomes one of the important uh, backdrops or thematic elements of the film, uh, how, the, how history and daily life seem to be intertwined and how one affects the other. There is also a very major component, in, uh, very related of course, but uh, in what might be termed the southern question. This is the phrase that is used by Rossi and is used by a number of char the characters in the film. And uh, to put it very, uh, maybe briefly, and very simplistically in my own way, and granted I am not an Italian history expert or scholar, so uh, my way of explaining it might be very, very simplistic, overly so. And uh, in that case, I really urge you to explore the criterion release, the essay, and also the supplements as a means of, of further exploring on your end uh, what the socio-political and historical significance uh, of this particular time period 
uh, is in the context of this particular work. And so please don't rely on my, my very, I admit, very poor explanations, but uh, please explore the criterion release, and I'll get to those supplements in a moment. But uh, if I were to try to explain in terms that, uh, uh, in the, if I were to try to explain my understanding of the situation, it is that the Southern question is in essence a way, a shorthand way to refer to the socio-economic and cultural divide that actually existed between the northern part of Italy and the southern part of Italy. And if to be even more specific, the idea of a unified central, uh, centralized rule of the Italian state, the entire Italian state, under uh, under uh, this fascist rule, uh, but really having its roots um, many many years back in terms of the uh, Italian unification, the the ultimate result of this, however, was that where policies were enacted, socio-economic policies were enacted uh, that seemed to be. Uh, uh, basically uh, centralized in the north, the actual effects of those uh, were quite dra dramatic and drastic and quite negative for the population and society in the south, which was, uh, which was of course, more agrarian, and it had uh, a population uh, that was uh, generally uh, getting older because of certain issues of migration from the south to the north. And also, therefore, there were uh, issues of, of uh, class and poverty uh, that uh, directly affected uh, many of the, uh, the population in the south, such that uh, it has been, uh, it's the the the, uh, the the idea that is being addressed by Rossi is therefore the notion of what can be defined as being the broken relationship between the citizens and the state. And uh, to be specific in the context of the South, the citizens of this particular southern town community, um, Aliano, or it's referred to in the film as Galliano, which is in the southern part, uh, really in the south of Italy, in the what's referred to as the the heel of the the uh, of the boot of Italy, the shape of the of the country itself, the geographic shape, and uh, it's in a place that's refer that used to be called um, uh, uh, Lucania. It's now referred. To, it's now called uh, Basilicata, and uh, this is a very rural. A small town uh, whose uh, citizens are, uh, uh, for the most part, uh, peasants, and they are uh, poor, and they could also be described as working class. And the uh, essential historical structures of the South up to this point in time, uh, throughout its history, has been based in a, a feudalistic type of landowner class, which is therefore heavily agrarian. And uh, these kinds of historic backdrops lead up to the situation of the South, and in particular, this particular Southern community that Carlo Levi finds himself in. And these questions, therefore, of how the people are being affected uh, w with regard to fascism and uh, foreign policy and also um, domestic socioeconomic policy, I think are at the heart of what Levi and Rossi are really trying to examine. And uh, the South being, in Rossi's terms, being left behind by the, uh, the, the government whose uh, centralized actions are focused primarily on the North. And the North is admittedly by Rossi and by Levy, uh, is, uh, tends to be more uh, bourgeois, tends to be more um, uh, uh, populated with the bourgeois intelligentsia, uh, in which, Rossi, um, in which uh, Levy himself uh, was a part. Uh, because we understand, too, that Levy was uh, from Turin, and so he is, in, in essence, someone from the north 
who comes into the South during his political exile, which is the focus of this work. And during his exile, he becomes aware and he realizes the plight and the dire situations uh, that face these really uh, th this, these people. And this is very important too. These are human beings. Uh, these are uh, warm people uh, that Levy begins to know and begins to understand and really becomes a part of. And we see him interacting with the community. We see the community uh, welcome him and, and, and uh, really benefit from his presence. Uh, because as we know, Levy has, Levy had, uh, uh, he was not just an artist, he was also uh, he also had an uh, educational background uh, in medicine. And so uh, in this town, uh, he arrives and we understand that uh, the town itself is plagued with cases of malaria and sickness. And there aren't any adequate medical facilities uh, to aid uh, the people when they fall ill. And so that's where uh, Carlo Levi uh, really tries to uh, uh, resolve certain issues uh, within himself about who he sees himself as. And as he is under this kind of exploration himself, he is undergoing his relationships, uh, episodically speaking, uh, with the members of this particular community in the southern part of Italy. And through that process, he and we begin to realize the extent of the real direct impact, socioeconomic and cultural impact uh, that is at play here in the context of what is being discussed as described by Rossi and others as the so-called southern question. So this is at the heart of this work. It's in many ways the beating heart. And all the, and I refer to socioeconomic situations, but that is also linked to uh, the, the fascist state and also the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the foreign policy, if you will, of the Italian state at the time. So all of this is very interconnected. And then at the center of it also, uh, while this very deep, profound discussion is happening, the film also engages quite beautifully, in fact, in the exploration of the town itself, the people. The film is actually shot in this location, and we actually see the people, uh, some of the people who are, are, are uh, non-actors uh, 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 being portrayed here. And then at the center, too, is the brilliant, brilliant performance by uh, Gian Maria Volante as Carlo Levi. And this is incredibly important, too, because uh, uh, Volante does something remarkable in his acting performance, which is he is able to express uh, intelligence and also he is able to express doubt, self-doubt, and he's also able to express compassion and curiosity, but he never goes, he never crosses the line into uh, mocking or seemingly f uh, feeling like he is above it all. He never goes into that, in, in, into that area, which is, I think, a very important point to make because uh, this is not Carlo Levi looking above it all. This is Carlo Levi trying to really live in this situation, trying to understand the situation that he is in, and also trying to cope with it. And through the mechanism and uh, means of compassion, I think is one of the primary ways in which Carlo Levi, as depicted in Christ Stopped at Eboli, is coping with the situation and is dealing with the situation. And that is a fundamental point that I think is, is worth underlining. Um, I should say also in closing that the term that is used by Rossi in one of the supplements is uh, par hasard in French, which is translated into English as by chance. In other words, it is because of the political exile that the uh, man from Turin, uh, Carlo Levi, ended up in the southern part of Italy to begin with. So it was in many ways by chance. He didn't m mean to go there on purpose, but by chance he went there and because of that chance, he ended up learning 
And we too, through his experience, ended up learning about the, this particular area of uh, Italy and the people there, which I think is a very significant point and one that we see uh, is carried through by virtue of the fact that uh, Levy uh, wrote the book, uh, which was then published in, in 1945, and then it led to the film adaptation that we have here from Francesco Rossi. So, in essence, this extraordinary work holds so much uh, depth and scope that it is a a, a work that uh, really should be seen by as many people as possible. And let me say also as another final note, I should say that while it might seem to be very much directly and perhaps so closely knit with the Italian experience of the 1930s and perhaps even in the 1970s when it was released, all the same, and I think those parallels, I think, are very strong and very striking, and they're evidently there, and they have to be, because that's part of the heart of this film. At the same time, these aspects of a socioeconomic divide that can be explained in terms, or that can be depicted in terms of class divide, that can be depicted in terms of levels of poverty and education and uh, lack of availability to, uh, to basic medicine, and, uh, and, and that kind of those pressing issues, I think we can safely say are not exclusive to the time, but they are rather issues that uh, potentially face us all wherever we live in the world. And so there is a really universal aspect to the issues that are being depicted and explored in this work. And as another final, final point, excuse me for all the final points here, I should say too that at the same time as we have an exploration of these very serious themes, I should point out that uh, Rossi's camera and uh, uh, Levy's treatment here, they never wander uh, uh, in terms of the depiction of the people themselves. Uh, the, the work here by Rossi always manages to maintain this noble sense of dignity and respect, uh, a, a real uh, loving nature vis-a-vis uh, -vis the people here. And I think that is very important. And we see uh, moments of warmth and we see uh, lovely uh, uh, human moments uh, as well as the moments of of the dialogue and the exploration of these of these uh, themes vis-a-vis -vis the southern question and so this is all to say too that this is a very rich tapestry portrait of a particular part of Italy uh, that is at the focus as I say of the Carlo Levi political exile uh, that is at the heart of this film Christ stopped at Eboli so with that, I'd like to now focus on this really uh, magnificent release by the Criterion Collection. Uh, this is, as I say, spine number 1043. And this release by the Criterion Collection is the 220-minute version based off of a new 2K digital restoration, a very recent one. And the, th to be more specific, this version of Christ Up to Eboli that we now have from Criterion is the so-called tele Italian television version, uh, which was uh, divided up into four episodes, each about an hour. And then, so this is a collection of all those four episodes in this uh, release. And so it's in it's it's one it's considered I think one film or it's considered a television work divided into four episodes. But however you want to describe it, we have the entirety of that work here uh, in on one disc. So that in and of itself is amazing. Uh, also because at least as far as uh, places outside of Italy go, uh, this film up to now had only been made available in the so-called shorter theatrical version 
And the theatrical version, at least uh, which is what I have on this older DVD from Facets Video, is about 145 minutes. And so what we get is we get a longer version of Christ Stopped at Eboli, the Rossi work, here uh, 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 by the Criterion Collection uh, with English subtitles uh, for the first time, as my understanding would have it. So uh, that is, uh, I think, really a remarkable feat. And I should say, too, that the shorter theatrical version is not made available uh, together with the uh, in the Criterion release. And so some people, I think, might say that the Criterion release might have been a little bit better had it been able to include the shorter theatrical version. And I don't think you'd be unreasonable to have that kind of view. Um, I should say, having seen both versions now, that uh, I, I love the theatrical version uh, very much so. Uh, but now, uh, seeing the longer version, uh, the four-episode version, uh, which is uh, different from the earlier theatrical, or not earlier, but the theatrical version in that there are, of course, scenes uh, excised. There are some moments where some scenes, uh, the order is switched around. Uh, but uh, for the most part, the differences are to do with certain scenes that have either been truncated or deleted entirely. Uh, so uh, when it comes to a comparison between the, the shorter theatrical version and now the, the four-episode, nearly four-hour version of this, uh, from my point of view, this longer version is uh, the one to watch. There's nothing wrong with the theatrical version per se, but there is a richness and there is uh, there, there are moments of humanity that are captured here that have been maybe edited out for purposes of the shorter theatrical. And so therefore, for me, this version is the one to go with. And so while it might be interesting to try to find and try to get the theatrical version, uh, and if you're interested, I really wish you luck, uh, still, uh, if you have just, just the the uh, the 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 longer version the nearly 4 hour version that is i think going to be the definitive one uh to go with going forward uh for audiences outside of italy uh and so to have this new version new i'm sorry to have this version be made available at last uh like this is really cause for celebration uh, as a final note uh, i believe this dvd is out of print from facets i'm not sure as to how one can get the the theatrical version else through other means, uh, but as I say, um, it, it could have been not, it would have been nice if Criterion could have uh, managed to include it with its release. But I don't think overall, I don't think uh, it's it's uh, uh, it, I don't think that's a really big detriment to the Criterion release, um, especially when we consider once again another way to think about it, which is having the longer version like this is itself a great cause for celebration. So that's just uh, my own take on, on the, the point about the non-inclusion of the theatrical version. So, uh, but uh, we have, therefore, the, the fuller version here. And it looks great, and it sounds great. Um, this earlier, it has a difference uh, in terms of its, its palette, uh, visual palette from the version that I have on this Facets DVD. There is a notable sense of, of a, maybe some scenes outdoors that have a little bit of a slighter, darker tone to them than the earlier print. Uh, so uh, there is that aspect to it as well. It's not noticeably so. Or it's not to the point where it detracts or distracts or takes away from the visual experience of watching the work by uh, on Criterion, don't get me wrong. Now, for those of you who know both versions or maybe you have the Facets DVD, you'll notice a, a visual difference in presentation. But uh, uh, whatever version that you prefer, uh, all the same, I think what we have here with Criterion in terms of the picture quality and the 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 Christmas the crispness of the image, I think, is absolutely stellar. So uh, that is the the new Criterion Blu-ray, and then we have the special features. Now, the spe all this stuff is on one disc, and perhaps maybe due to data issues, it might have been. Uh, more beneficial to try to separate the, 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 all the material onto two separate disks rather than have it all uh, into one disk. So uh, those are sort of technical issues uh, that uh, might have added 
uh, maybe uh, more possibilities as far as presentation or supplements are concerned. But be that as it may, I think for what we get here, I think is it's absolutely fantastic. So uh, the first thing we get is an absolutely essential interview with Michael F. Moore, who uh, from 2020, it's approximately 27 minutes, and he is a and he is the uh, the uh, the the he provided the subtitles and he is also an expert in Italy uh, in Italian uh, history and culture and he also uh, has um, uh, a, a history in terms of it, the Italian film culture and Rossi and so to have Michael F. Moore's one-on-one -on -one interview uh, like this is essential absolutely essential because he goes into many important topics. He goes into uh, uh, Rossi, the filmmaker, Carlo Levi, and the relationship there, which is, of course, the backbone of this work. And then he also goes into specific aspects of the North and the South, the so-called Southern question that is at the heart of this film. He also talks about specifics of, say, Italian dialect, uh, which goes over my head because I don't speak Italian. But according to Michael F. Moore, there are moments where we get the dialect of the Italian language playing a kind of key role uh, in the way that some of the peasants in this part of the of the country speak to Levy, but also in some moments where Levy is is by himself and he's talking there's a particular moment uh, that's cited where he's speaking there's a particular part in the at the at the um, in the first part of the four part sequence where he's talking Levy is with his dog and so uh, that's uh, cited as an example of the use of Italian dialect uh, which in itself is I think a a, a furthering of the uh, of the of the of, um, uh, of the thematic understanding of the so-called divide, if you will, between north and south, uh, and then uh, to complete the discussion, Michael F. Moore talks about uh, briefly the theatrical version, and then he also talks about the significance of Christ stopped at Italy uh, in his own personal life, and so uh, that and so much more in this, as I say, essential interview with Michael F. Moore. And then we have another supplement, which is called um, uh, Reflections on a Political Cinema. And this is from uh, 1978. Uh, from uh, This is a French program, Cine Regard. And this is approximately 24 minutes. Again, as I say, 1978. And this is focusing on what is termed political cinema and uh, from Italy. And it focuses in... <clears throat> on uh, Francesco Rossi and also focuses on Ilio Petri and uh, so we get uh, interviews with Rossi and Petri uh, and also um, uh, and this is in French too so that's that's also uh, 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 really interesting to see uh, for instance Rossi is giving his interview in French and so that's uh, where he talks about the southern question and also Levy going to the south par hazard or by chance uh, and to hear his take on on the Italian film industry and working with uh, Italian television uh, and uh, uh, the the process of trying to capture one's vision uh, when talking about political stories on cinema and so uh, Petri and Rossi and give their takes here and it's extraordinary to hear them speak so uh, this is a really wonderful uh, uh, supplement to be included but that's not all because we have a third supplement which is uh, an excerpt from a program also in French uh, Italique from 1974 and this is approximately 26 minutes and this is a program where we see Rossi and Carlo Levi on camera and they are talking and uh, they are being jointly interviewed and so we see the, the the relationship that they have between each other we see the mutual respect that they have and we also get a sense of of the work itself uh, the Levi work and how it is being uh, handled by Rossi and the significance of that. So this is, I think, focused uh, primarily on the work, Levy, and how Rossi handles the work. And so I think this is a very important aspect of the of an understanding and appreciation uh, of this film. I spoke earlier in this video about how uh, I think 
uh, for maybe for a number of people, it might be a, a weakness of this particular Criterion release that it doesn't include the theatrical version of the film. And I think, as I say, that's not an unreasonable position to hold. Uh, however, I think upon my own further consideration of the matter, I would actually suggest that maybe a more worthwhile comparative analysis would be not necessarily between the theatrical version of the film and the the four episode uh, uh, um, 220 minute version of the film. I think rather that maybe a more fruitful, robust comparative analysis would be between say the 220 minute version by on Criterion and the Carlo Levy book itself. And so I think that kind of comparative analysis is uh, potentially anyway, uh, quite rewarding. Uh, I, I think very rewarding. And so uh, I would actually recommend that uh, if you are interested. And, and uh, re watching this particular supplement, I think is a, at, at the very least, I think it provides uh, really good uh, essentials into the work and Levy, the, the author, and similar aspects of that. So uh, in case you're interested, I recommend uh, the third supplement here uh, from 1974. And then there is a 13-minute excerpt uh, from 2014, so rather recent. And this is a uh, this is a, an excerpt which is an interview with Rossi himself. And this is Rossi. Uh, this is uh, from a 2014 documentary, uh, Marco Spagnoli. And here we have, it's called Unico and Unique. This is where Rossi talks about the actor, Gian Maria Volante, who of course was the actor who played Levy in the film. And he's speaking uh, in very laudatory terms, quite rightly so, I think, about the working method of the actor and working with him and how he approached the material and working in this particular setting and, and the like. And so uh, this is a wonderful ode to the actor Gian Maria Volante. So, and it's wonderful to get it from, uh, from Francesco Rossi himself. So uh, this is, uh, once again, Unico. Rossi remembers Gian Maria Volante, approximately 13 minutes. And then last but not least, we get a trailer, uh, the Rialto Pictures trailer. And it looks gorgeous, by the way, as does the presentation itself. And then we get the, uh, the, the insert here. So the disc uh, case looks like this. And then we get the insert, which is obviously taken from the inside. I've taken the liberty of taking it out uh, prior to the start of this video. And it's one of the fold-outs. So I don't want to bore you with another comment about the fold-out versus the staple booklet. You already know my views about that. But going on to other matters, this has a, another essential essay. This time it is by Professor Alexander Steele, and this is called Memories of Exile. This is essential for many reasons uh, because it covers, among many points, Rossi, it covers Carlo Levi, it covers uh, some aspects of differences between the book and the film. It also covers um, uh, uh, aspects of uh, the importance of history and the the breakdown of the relationship between citizen and state, uh, as I was referring to the, the so-called Southern question, also fascism in Italy, also the, the, the war between Italy and Ethiopia uh, that, was, uh, that, uh, that started in, in 1935, and uh, these other details. And so it is all here in this really well-written essay. Uh, I, I, it's really fascinating. A fascinating read. I read it a number of times and I was just uh, really captivated by it. So once again, this is Alexander Steele's Memories of Exile. I suppose if I could say one thing or a couple things uh, would be uh, the lack of any commentary track 
is another thing that I notice. Um, it would have been wonderful to have a commentary track. Again, I understand it depends on who gives the commentary track. Of course, commentary track quality varies from release to release. I get that as well. But on the whole, I, I think Criterion's commentary tracks are stellar. Uh, it would have been so wonderful to have a commentary track here. But as I say, we still get some great supplements, uh, such as the Michael F. Moore interview, etc. Um, and then uh, I mentioned earlier about the, the fact that the theatrical version isn't included here, but you already know my thoughts about that. So it's not a, I don't think it's a major blow to this particular Criterion release. Uh, but if we are to then focus on this in uh, in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of the, the presentation and the release itself as a kind of final wrap-up, I would say that this is, this is extraordinary. It's extraordinary by virtue of the fact that we are getting the long 220-minute version. That alone is reason to get this version. To have this version available like this is extraordinary. And I can't emphasize this strongly enough. To have this longer version with English subtitles and it looking like this is extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. And for those who only know the theatrical version, this film is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful in, this, in the theatrical version. Of course, I believe that and I, I think that way. Be that as it may, the version that we have here the 220 minute version is miraculous. It is extraordinary. It is miraculous. It needs to be seen by as many people as possible. And if the Criterion release can lead to that, then that will make me a very happy person indeed. This is moving. This is uh, deep, personal. It is, uh, it is, it is profoundly emotional. And it also has threads with history that I was trying to refer to earlier. It is also an example of the great deep filmmaking of Rossi. You know, one of the points that was raised by Michael F. Moore and by Alexander Steele and others was that uh, Rossi, in terms of his career, might have been known for his so-called journalistic uh, docudrama type of films from earlier in his career, which in some ways makes Christ Stopped at Italy perhaps somewhat unusual because it feels more lyrical. There are moments of beautiful, slow passages of, of uh, landscape and uh, the environment uh, that might not necessarily seem quote-unquote journalistic. However, what Michael F. Moore and uh, uh, Professor Steele and others do point out too, which is really profound, is that this is still an example of Rossi's journalistic concerns in the sense that he is taking this material and he is focusing in again on the so-called Southern question and the divide, the socio-economic and political and cultural divide. Uh, and this has to do with class, this has to do with politics, this has to do with, with society, and this has to do with Italy. And so in that sense, this is really a fundamental concern of the filmmaker Rossi. And in that sense, it is incredibly important. It is a prime example of Italian cinema. It is a prime example of cinema itself. It is moving. It is glorious. It is, it is uh, uh, gut-wrenching. It is also uh, very direct. And it is a, a beautiful example of the extraordinary power of cinema. So I can't emphasize strongly enough just how how much I feel like this. And so if you are interested, my friends, please, please, I urge you to uh, check out this film, which is Criterion Collection's release of Christ Stopped at Eboli. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time, my dear, dear friends. And cheers. Thank you.